Hi everyone and welcome to Asami Rat Care. So today's video is going to be all about picking up rats and I'm going to attempt to demonstrate this um, whilst hopefully my rats will um, allow me to demonstrate picking them up without just leaping on me like Chocobo keeps doing. Um, I think one thing that you need to bear in mind whenever you're thinking about picking up a rat is a rat is ultimately um, a prey species. They can also predate certain kind of insects and that kind of thing but ultimately in the wild they um, naturally are predated on by um, large animals um, and by birds of prey and such and so instinctively um, unless they know what to expect from a situation they will be scared if you if they if you pick them up from above and um, if you startle them if you do something unexpected you can freak them out quite easily um, so you need to take that into account when you're picking them up um, this is particularly true when you've got new rats. They're unlikely to just be um, leaping on you like my rats currently are. Um, it might take them a little bit of time to build up that level of trust and interest in you, or interest in you as a means of an escape route, which is the real reason why Chocobo is trying to climb up me. Yes, yes, Chucks. Um, so when you're thinking about picking up, the first thing that you want to make sure you do is make sure that the rat is aware that you're coming. Um, so you can do that by kind of just tapping on the ground in front of them and letting them have a quick sniff. That's kind of like a polite way of saying hello. It works particularly well with, um, let's say, a rat that it might be partially sighted, particularly red-eyed rats or ruby-eyed rats can find it quite difficult. Um, it's also particularly true of um, kind of a rat that isn't used to being handled. So you're letting them know that you're there. So hello. And then let them have a sniff if you are in some cats' cases, frantically lick. Um, you can also do it by talking to them. Um, bear in mind that some rats are deaf or may not know what that's um, about, but it will at least let you know that you're there. So they're expecting something, they know you're there, and then try and make sure they've got eye contact. And I will say there are limitations to this um, as well. So if you're dealing with a rat that's particularly um, terrified of handling, then you may not want to let them know that you're there. You might want to move quickly. But in the majority of situations, you want the rat to know that you're, that you're there. And then the best way to kind of go across, you notice what I tend to do is stroke mine a couple of times first. That kind of accustoms them to the fact that I'm there, I'm um, kind of being friendly, I'm saying hello, I'm not just going right straight in and grabbing them. It's a bit like, like if you're going up to somebody and meeting them for the first time, you probably introduce yourself before you go up and give them a hug. <laughs> um, it's kind of similar things for the rats and it's a little bit respectful. But again, different situations, you may not always have the time or the opportunity to do that if you've got a rat that's very reluctant or, or hand shy. So what I'd do is have that quick kind of hello, how are you? Give them a stroke <laughs> and then literally pick them up and you're looking to pick them up around the shoulders and then fairly quickly afterwards you're looking to support the bum. Now any kind of active rat will naturally struggle a little bit. You can see Chocobo would rather not be held still even though she's licking me. This is the lick of please put me down and um, oh my god I want to be running around and um, why can't I be free? Um, but she's not struggling too badly to be honest. Um, I would expect rats that were kind of slightly less used to me, let's try one of the babies, um, to struggle a little bit more. So these have not had as much handling as my adult rats for obvious reasons. They're a lot younger. Um, clearly they're not that bothered though. Um, to be honest, this showing you how to handle difficult rats is probably going to have to wait until I actually have some difficult rats. Um, but I do get some rescues coming through, so I'll do a particular one on that if um, if that happens. So yes, so it's that's it. It's pick them up around the shoulders, so you're looking at between the kind of shoulders and the ribs, and then you're holding them securely. So if you hold them insecurely, you'll find that they wiggle more, like Chocobo did there, and sometimes they will fling their tails around like a windmill. Did she just hit you in the face? Let's try and see if one of the other ones will win though. Uh, it's a problem when you when you kind of get your rats very used to being handled. There's a little bit, so you see how she's whisking her, round, her tail around. That is a sign that the rat feels insecure and they, they don't feel like they're well supported. Um, so that's why just putting your hand underneath them makes them feel a hell of a lot more supported and actually bring them into your body if they're um, not, not kind of sure, if they're a little bit scared it's a great way of making them feel safe and um, there's a lot more for them to hold on to there than if you're kind of like holding them out there or holding them one-handed um, but you can still hold them one-handed um, just try and keep it to a minimum um, and, and it tends to be easier when the rats are quite used to you and quite relaxed around you um, what I do a lot when I pick up actually is got them up and you'll notice me do this actually almost instinctively and what I'm doing is stroking down the body and I'm actually stroking 
down for a purpose. This is my kind of form of health check. Um, and I do this without even really thinking about it every single time um, I hold my, any of my rats actually. I just kind of stroke down the body and I'm just checking for any lumps and bumps and abnormalities, um, particularly in those leg pit areas and the arm pit areas. Um, they're where mammary tumours quite often pop up in girls, so I just do it instinctively now, it's not particularly purposeful. And it also has quite a calming effect on rats, particularly kind of your large dominant books. Um, the closest I've got to that is Tato, who was not a book, but is very large and fairly dominant. Uh, you're, you're my alpha rat, aren't you, Missy? Um, but yes, you notice if I stop stroking her, I'll support her bum, um, if she's just more comfortable like that, and it's nicer on her. But if I stroke her, she actually tends to zone out a little bit. Um, it's quite a calming thing for them. I wouldn't do it for a long period of time, but it's a bit like how you would stroke a ferret, interestingly enough. So that's how I kind of pick up and handle most of the time. So babies, it's a little bit different. Babies are a lot smaller. So you notice... <laughs> no, they all run off. Um, you notice when I pick them up, I'm kind of like all around them. Now they fit very easily into my hand. They're also more delicate, so I don't want to put as much force on them. So I kind of like cup. Now the girl that just kind of decided she wasn't in the mood for, when I say girl, I think it was actually the topaz boy, um, decided she wasn't in the mood for handling. That's absolutely kind of fine. I will push it to a degree if I particularly want to. Um, but yes, with baby rats, because they're smaller, you're kind of cupping them a lot more. And there's no point in me holding them underneath because there isn't really any underneath at this age. Um, bear in mind, you should not be um, homing rats at this age. These rats are only four weeks old. And by the time they go to the new homes, they will be substantially longer. We could be looking at least another inch on that body. Um, but yes, again, at this what I'm doing here is, you notice how I'm wrapping my hat fingers around them quite a lot? Smaller body makes them feel more secure. And that's um, never a bad thing, is it, miss? Go in trouble. Don't worry, you have to chop. Right, so next thing to talk about when, when handling rats, let's see if the model cooperate. There'll be certain situations where you need to pick up a rat in an emergency. Right, so sometimes you can just get them as you would normally do. Sometimes they may be in a fight or in kind of wound up. So when a rat is wound up, you will see it. Their fur will fluff right up. Uh, they will look angry. <laughs> um, this is the easiest way to do it. Big fluffed up. They will kind of hunch and they will sometimes be attacking other rats. Now, if you pick them up this way, it's fairly easy for them to whiz around unless you've got them in a really good grip and bite you. Um, that isn't them being horrible or mean to you, that is them reacting out of kind of the feeling for the situation. Now, there is a particular hold that I have, um, which I call the, the right death grip, which demonstrate here on Mog. So if you notice, um, these two fingers go either side of the head and then my thumb and my other fingers go underneath there. Now, in that position, a rat cannot turn around and bite you. Sorry, Chocobo wants to escape. Go on, miss. Um, yeah, so like that, the, the kind of ratty death grip and then support their body, that rat cannot turn around and bite you. And you can hold them quite securely like that. So that is quite a useful hold if you really need it. Um, one that you can kind of play if you do really need to kind of grab a rat. And again, on a slightly smaller rat on thing. And again, support them underneath. But that's basically stopping the head lash around and get you. Um, I don't normally have to do that very often, but occasionally I'll do it if I have to deal with a really angry rescue or something, or a rat that is really afraid and I just need to get them out for that period of time until I can get them on me. Um, and that's another thing. So let's say you've got a rat that's in a carrier or it's in a small cage and you need to get it out. Um, I can't really demonstrate here, but I'll talk you through and hopefully at some point I'll, I'll have a video to be able to do on it. Um, so you've got a rat and let's say they're in one corner of the carrier hunched up, which is what they normally do, or they're kind of in an aggressive pose, pose their mouth open wide, all fluffed up. You know that they're kind of going to bite you, but you need to get them out. So what I would tend to do in that situation is I will tap on the opposite side of the carrier, try and attract their attention to this hand. At the same hand, <laughs> at the same time, my other hand will be waiting. As soon as they start going out for that hand, I will move very quickly. And this is a situation where I don't let them know that I'm coming and then put them in the death grip um, and get them out straight out. Once they're out of that kind of cornered situation in that carry, they're actually normally fine, but it's just one that you have to bear in mind and um, that can happen. So other things to think about um, and other ways to handle. Now, sometimes you will see people scruffing rats. So they will grab them by the scruff of their neck here, which is a certain amount of loose skin. But I would say um, in a large adult, unless you really have to restrain them for some purposes, I've seen it done at the vets sometimes. To be fair, I prefer the death grip. It's, it's kind of more comfortable for them. 
um, less likely to pull out, pull at the skin and damage it. Um, but I would avoid scruffing a rat, particularly adult rats. It's not so bad when they're this age. Um, you'll actually see them scruff each other a little bit. They have a lot more loose skin. Any trouble? Um, well, saying that. But it's not. It's still not particularly nice way for them to be held. It's not particularly secure. Some people say because their mums pick them up like that, that they will just instantly react, re relax. And the majority of rats don't. Some some breeders do use that as a test of how um, friendly they are. I will say I don't think any of my rats would react well to being scruffed, but they're absolutely fine to handle and very very friendly little bonny babies. Are you trouble? Sorry. But yes, so. Um, I would avoid scruffing where possible. The other way, places you sometimes see people picking up, and one that you have to be very, very careful of, is by the tail. So let's grab myself a demonstrator. So we have a baby. Um, so the tail on a rat, um, on a baby, it's not so bad if you absolutely have to, to pick them up by the base of their tail. And notice here that I've got the majority of their tail in my hand, and I'm actually not putting a lot of force on it. So if a baby is about to dart onto something, under the something it shouldn't, or get away to somewhere that's not safe, it's, it's not a big deal to pick it up by the tail, but to support it. Now bear in mind a baby's body is very lightweight. This is quite different to an adult. Um, unless you're in an emergency situation, or you really know what you're doing, I would not recommend what, what they call tailing an adult, kind of thing. So again, if you have to restrain an adult in any way by its tail, you want to hold it by its ba the base of its tail um, and you do not want to be putting force on that for any length of time. Now I do know some experienced handlers that will, it, like in the situation where I would use the death grip on a rat to try and get it out, they will sometimes grab the base of its tail and then as soon as they've lifted it up they will stick a hand underneath it to support it. Um, but again it's very near the body and it's usually on big adult books with really thick tails. Um, but it is very dangerous. If you can, if you end up holding towards the tip of the tail, you can very easily deglove a tail. So what that means is the skin on the tail will just come off and you'll be left with bone and sinew underneath. And that is um, an incredibly painful thing for the rats to go through. And it's an emergency bear and probably amputation job. So it's something you need to act on straight away and something you should definitely avoid if at all possible. Um, like I'm saying, the tail is best left alone if you can pick up the rat without the tail using the tail that is absolutely the best the only time i will personally kind of get a hand on a tail is when a rat is about to do something really stupid that could cause it major damage let's say if it gets near an open window and it's about to jump out you will grab it by whatever you've got but get it in the base and try not to put any weight on it i'm just going to have to remove chocobo from the new ones now you can be my demonstration model again. Yes, so Chocobo's is a better tail actually because it's quite a fat tail um, to demonstrate it on, but near the base. And bear in mind that if you hold the tail at a, a particularly extreme angle, again, you can break it. The tail is designed to bend, but it's only designed to bend so far. Um, so you want to be very careful. Generally speaking, it's best avoided. There are many ways to pick up rats and manhandle them without hurting them. Um, and yeah the tail is is um, a risky part of the rat though there are some people that i would trust to take to, to kind of pick up a rat by its tail um but they do really know what they're doing don't they missy yeah so that's it so generally speaking when you're holding a rat make sure as a bit of a recap you've got them around the kind of chest underneath the arms and you support the bottom um bring them to your body as soon as you can avoid scruffing them or holding them by the tail unless in an absolute emergency and if you are going to hold them by the tail it has to be by the base um, and you're more using it to restrain them than to pick them up. Um, if a rat's tail whizzes around then it's not feeling particularly steady. If a rat struggles when you're holding it it's either bored or it's not feeling particularly safe. Um, some rats may squeak an awful lot um, when handled. That happens with rats that are not familiar with it or rats that are just stubborn and want to be let free. Um, I would say you just kind of got to keep repeating it. Don't hold them for too long until they're used to it. And what can be very nice is try and make holding the rats a pleasant experience for them. So you notice with mine then, while I, while I hold them, I give them a bit of a scritch around the neck and stroke them all over, do my health checks, but also making it a fun experience, which means they choose to come to me. So actually, really most of the time, I don't have to worry too much about picking my girls up. And I do this from quite a young age. Um, the babies are getting used to it too. And that kind of adds to the experience and it means that I don't have to really worry about picking them up.
but I do it like as, as babies now, I'm picking them up and putting them down all the time. And it's important that you do that too, just so it's kind of familiar for them and it's like normal. Um, and they will quickly make it very easy for you to pick them up. Um, but yes, and when, de when dealing with um, rats that are not familiar with you, don't know you there, make sure you introduce yourself wherever possible, unless you absolutely have to get in there fast. And then when you do attract the attention elsewhere, move in fast. Um, and don't be surprised if they do get scared by that. It's a kind of a, it's a last resort. It's a, I need to get you out of that situation fairly quickly. That's my ear, don't lick my ear. Um, yeah, I need to get you out of that situation very quickly. So I'm going to grab you to, to a place where you're going to feel safer. Um, so that's why I'm not asking for permission first, if that makes sense. So that's it for me and the girls. Um, much picking up um, and Chocobo, who's naughty. So bye for now and um, hopefully that was useful for you.